Tony, what the hell are you doing? Plus, a great team daily, era one all over the place, Naya is living her best life, Avery is kicking some ass, Darrell hopefully didn't actually throw out his back, Devin proves his brain bona fides, Josh breaks up with Tori, and cue the old school montage because there is a toga party, it's the challenge. Battle of the Eras episode 3 recap coming up right now. What up, my fellow challenge lovers? Welcome to The Challenge Historian, where we dive deep into all things MTV's The Challenge, past, present, or future, if it's happening in The Challenge Universe. We are here to document it. I am your host and dedicated challenge historian, Jacob Hollibaugh. Thank you so very, very much for joining me here. Finally back three episodes into the season to our regularly scheduled Wednesday night recording. I'm back in the States, watching live with you all, reacting live with you all, taking my notes, and hitting record right now after so whether you're listening to this thursday morning in the middle of the night wednesday night that's pretty extreme but i know there's a few of you thursday morning friday over the weekend anytime you are listening thank you so 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 much for being here i love and appreciate each and every one of you we are here obviously to cover episode three of battle of the eras battle of the eras is the only scheduled programming reminder to give you for the near-term future recaps will come late wednesday nights for More or less the rest of the season, we'll see there might be one or two hiccups here or there, but more or less Wednesday night's airs recaps will be coming. One other thing, Challenge Mania Chicago is happening this weekend. If you happen to be going, living in the Chicago area or coming into town for the show, hit me up, let me know, come say hi when we are there. And also... I'm struggling a little. I like to think in advance of some questions for each of the cast members if I get to meet them in the meet and greet lines afterwards. So I'm um, struggling a little bit. So if you've got any ideas, any dying questions you've always had for CT, Katie, Ryan, Mark, Derek, even Scott, DM me. Let me know if uh, if you got a good one and it's better than anything I come up with. I will ask them and I'll credit you and see if maybe they'll let me like record a little answer or something along those lines. We shall see. But Challenge Mania this weekend, if you're going, hit me up. Era's recaps will continue on Wednesday night's agenda. We will walk through the episode, hit all the major storylines and opinions. We'll hand out some awards and then we will do our predictions with. We will also talk about the format twist at the end. We will do that with the predictions portion. We won't do that during the walk through the episode. So stick around for that because whew, I am loving everything about the what we learn of the format at the very end of the episode. So without further ado, episode three, Battle of the Airs, season 40. Let's go. Opening segment at the house, not super long, but a couple impactful things, a couple real quick notes. It does start the entire episode, but technically the entire episode starts with the last week on and you know what happened and all the winners but after the last week on portion the first thing we get is Devin beating bananas on vendettas with Tony's help we get the flashback to that Devin's great confessional afterwards it's all wonderful but it definitely was a very interesting thing that was in the back of my head the whole time the rest of the episode of like something about vendettas something about tony devin bananas like what's what's going on here eventually obviously it alludes to tony being a part of something else that happens on vendettas that he recreates here we'll of course talk about that a lot later on michelle is trying to keep horacio interested in the game have you know like that you can have fun in this house it can be okay you can just compete She's she's trying her best. It's a good team move. Someone on that team has to go and try to be the one to do that outside of just Kyland, his best buddy. And yes, it might ring a little hollow. It's like you were the one that made our lives hell last season or one of the main ones. But, you know, you got to have a cohesive team. And if you're in her shoes, you're like, we we need him. We need him. He's maybe the best player here. Like we we need him all in here. So. Good move, uh, at least there. And then we get Naya and Josh confirmation that that's a thing. We see them kind of kissing a little bit, maybe in the pool, which we had seen in the trailer. And then we get full blown confirmation that Emily and Brad is very much a thing alluded to. 
on was I don't know if, if it was episode one or two or if it was the launch special. I think it was the launch special potentially where they alluded that this was but in the air already on night one or could be in the air. And then we get confirmation here that not only is it in the air, it's in the shower and they're both in the shower repeatedly a bunch and they're both having a great time with it, which I say amazing. Well done. There's one thing we know. There, there's a bunch of stuff we know about Brad in a challenge house. But one of those things is that Brad gets down in the challenge house. Okay. Always has seemingly always will plain and simple. And uh, so, yeah, I'm not surprised that he did it again. I'm a little surprised at how quickly and seemingly often it is happening between the two of them, but I love it. Go for it. There's obviously more romance to be discussed later, but for now we go to the daily. Such a good daily challenge. Loved everything about this. Great design. Love that it's just a full-blown team working together as a team daily challenge. Please, please, please. While they are in teams, which I hope is for a very long time, if not the whole game would be unbelievable and incredible, let them do full-blown team dailies. I think they're the best. They're they're the most fun to watch if they're in a team. And uh, it's physical. There's eating. There's challenge history. I love that they just get right up front. We knew, as I think it's Tori or someone uh, says on here, like, well, you know, it's season 40. They have all the seasons in the house. Of course, they're going to make us, you know, put them all in order at some point. Um, I think I saw on Twitter that maybe it was Kylan and Tori were like memorizing the night before, or Kylan was helping Tori, something along those lines. So, the people are picking up, you know, that this was obviously going to be a thing. I anticipated this. I just, I'm glad that it happened in the first one. I hope they make them do it over and over. Like, don't just forget now. I hope they make them do it multiple times this season would be great. But obviously, Challenge Historian loves getting a little history in there and the physical plus the eating and that all worked really, really great. Captains, you know, the moment he says this, what's up? Everyone does. Everyone in all the teams knows, even whether they've played a season with such a format element or not. They all know there's nothing else this is going to be except who is actually vulnerable, who's going to elimination, who has power. And it seems like there wasn't too many hard conversations or discussions, um, even though everyone did know what was up with this. So for that moment, it seemed from what we saw, good team chemistry all around with the single exception, maybe being Tony knowing what we think we know later about him maybe wanting to go home. Um, and so, yeah, I was a little, I, I thought there would be more fireworks over the, like, who's doing this. And especially when we got that Anissa confessional, I was like, oh, they're about to be like, Anissa, it's you. And we were about to start a Anissa, it's you every time uh, kind of storyline here. But it was not positive performers. Let's talk positive performers and negative performers. There was a few of each. I mean, there's obviously big groups, all of air three, positive, all of air one, negative, but to be a little more specific, positive performers, Devin, first and foremost, he is so damn good at everything. He shows it in the daily and in the elimination here, and it's great that his team knows it and his team is listening and I really hope that fans realize, and if you haven't elevated him as high in your estimation as maybe someone like myself has, I hope he continues to show you why he should be considered much higher than I think a lot of fans consider him. I think the ride or dies win. Maybe people that don't love Tory or just don't love the Vacation Alliance or didn't love that season don't like think like, you know, he got a win, but sure, whatever. It was on that season. He's so good at all of this. He is he is the like the last season or was it two seasons ago on Ride or Dies when he was helping everyone like from the side. Here's here pull the thing to there to shoot the little, you know ball that eventually would unfortunately break Olivia's nose at a later moment but like all the little moments like that he has one it seems like every other daily challenge he's just like I know how to do this and I can convince my team and lead my team to do it it's just really really impressive and it's a big moment to point out that his team is fully like of course we're listening to Devin whatever he says goes and then later they listen to Tori which is my other big positive performers and is all of air three four just listening to Devin in the boat, listening to Tori on the logos, everyone doing a great job with the eating, all of their air. Like that is not just because they win this one and then 
lose the one team player that maybe wasn't there to be a team player. And Tony at the end of the episode, everyone should be fearing air three. They're looking really good. If they have clear leadership on clear, different tasks and everyone, all good competitors falling in line with that leadership. Very, very good stuff. Kylan. He is a positive performer here. He knew those seasons. He had them memorized long ago. He's been ready for this portion. And again, I think we did. I think it was him that I saw Naya or someone on Twitter. I briefly looked at Twitter after finishing the recording to and getting ready to do the podcast. And I think I saw her say he was maybe helping with Tori the night before. So he was locked in on like, we got to know these things. And every person who finished the food, every single one of them, which is essentially everyone in the, the cast. Great work. Lots of spitting really lots of head in the bucket are you spitting are you throwing up are you you know there's lots of chicanery the especially the older two eras they know how to work the system here pretty much all of them know how to work the system here but great job anyways everyone finishing that negative performers really just era one but mostly if you have to call anyone out ct and brad have a little history of disagreement um, during challenges on, on teams, you know, the easy in the final moment, notwithstanding here, but uh, there's just no direction for era one. And it seems like those two are maybe supposed to be the ones giving the direction or that everyone's a little listening to. I think it's very interesting that, you know, CT maybe doesn't have as dominant of a voice as he's probably used to, given he's done a bunch of recent seasons where everyone's just like, you're CT. We listen to you. If you yell, you're a little scary. And all of them are like, you're CT. We will listen a little when you yell and you're a little scary, but like we we're buddies and we've known you for a long time and we've got, we've got ideas too. So that's interesting. And then just as the, as the former kayak instructor in me uh, that, you know, knows a thing or two about paddling, You don't want to be using the rudder. They were the only team that, you know, referenced even that the back person had a rudder, which isn't a rudder. It was, it was a paddle. It was just the only one connected in a different way, more like an oar that's connected on canoe. Anyways, you don't want to use it because it slows you down. That's not how you're supposed to turn. That's a last resort, extreme effort. You need to be turning based on which side your group is paddling on when and how strongly and just paddle in unison and paddle correctly. I digress. So Air One obviously had the worst day. Air Three, the best. A couple individual performers within that that did good or bad and stood out. Back to the house then. Let's talk the fun stuff first, and then we'll talk the game stuff second. They had a toga party. Unbelievable. I hope this is far from, I mean, they had a pool party in the opening section. We didn't really touch on it. Um, And then they're having a toga party here. And as CT and Rachel both say here, you know, vibes are good. Things are actually feeling like a little more like an old school. There is a fun. People are able to put the game down just for a moment, for a moment, at least. Obviously, the toga party, it goes all night. These, you know, for us, we get 60 seconds and then it's strategy. I would I, I would assume there was a pretty decent, you know, the getting ready, everyone getting glittered up, toged up. The whole part was really fun and that there was a lot more to the party a lot of time before it divulged into let's talk strategy and what the hell is Tony doing kind of talk. So hell yes, maybe show a little more season five footage because you clearly got it. You got it. We saw it. We know you have it. That's the one thing showing all these flashbacks to season one through nine. We know you have them. We know they're available in some form or fashion, maybe just without the sound, which is always the part that is, uh, you know, uh, catch up. But I digress. The outfits were incredible. We get 60 seconds of the fun before the strategy. Maybe give us two full minutes, maybe maybe double that up. I don't know, uh, but hope, I'm hopeful that maybe we'll get to see a bunch more of this party in clips on the social channel. Last week, they put out two, I think, at least that I saw, maybe more uh, little scenes on the social channels. One was... Uh, some strategy talk mixed with Jordan and uh, I think CT and Darrell were like talking strategy while Jordan and Derek wrestled in the pool. It was a nice little scene. They used to way back in the day, there was a brief period where it was like, you can watch a bunch of extra scenes on MTV.com. I like the use of afterwards, extra scenes, bonus content on the social channel. I hate the here's three scenes from the show. You know, the morning of the Tuesday before the show actually premiered. Like I want, I want, the scene. I want to watch it all live, but then give me as much afterwards as possible. If you've got five more three minute scenes that you want to show me, I will watch five more three minute scenes multiple times over, please. And thank you. Naya 
has got a little love triangle started here or just a little a little make out triangle. It doesn't even, you know, she references getting them to fall in love with their for strategy in the game, but I don't think anyone's going the love route. I think everyone's going the fun route and I applaud it. I love it. It's great for her. It's great strategy in the game if you can, you know, not totally spurn one or the other and then it's you know half good half bad strategy but if she can she can nail this balance it's great strategy and it's a great time a great strategy for having a great time in the house again if you cannot like totally spurn and turn off one of the two people which so far it seems like they're on board she's on board everyone's having a good time and so yeah real good for naya's social life and fun in the house as well as potentially for her game with two new allies on the era four team if that ever comes to matter which she is now by the episode ends a target so you never know it could already be paying dividends for her and then we get speaking of josh the breakup josh and tori josh breaking up with tori which to give a little of the history here, besides the fact they have, you know, they've worked together for the most part on a bunch of seasons, and they they seem to hang out a good amount in real life outside of the show, and you know would make the claims that they're very good friends. But the other part of this that you know needs to be said, a couple highlights is Tori and Corey, two of them together. Uh, but Tori, you know at least 50% a part of that with Corey was part of, you know, getting Josh up or back into the fight that would lead to Fessy smushing Josh's face and getting sent home on spies, lies and allies, which Josh was not very happy about. Um, that, that was kind of started by Tori and Corey just stirring the pot over the pizza thing. And then, she was the one, as they reference here, the USA 2 vote, and I think they even showed the USA 2 vote. She cast the one stray vote in the hopper that got him sent into elimination, the final elimination, and ultimately home right before he would have finally made his first final. She takes the dig at him here that he clearly hears all of them, like dogging him over something that, yes, even if he's totally cool with like, hey, like, you know, he has all the correct opinions here of like, uh, Naya and I aren't dating. We like made out in the pool. She could go hook up with him. Like, great. Even so, it's still, if you could be totally good with that, which it seems like he is, it doesn't feel nice to, while that's happening, hear a bunch of people like clowning you in any way, big or small, in the other room. Certainly not one that's supposed to be your friend. And so I totally get why Josh was done and over this. And it makes sense that Josh not being more dramatic about it. We know Josh is a dramatic guy when his emotions get running real high. And in this instance, you would think maybe the emotions would be running high, but I think them not and him not being that dramatic or not that like high strung about this tells you that he's been over this much more kind of heavily one-sided relationship, not purely one-sided, but as he says, like way I've done way more or been there way more than you have, you know, the, the scales aren't even here. I think he's he had that thought for a while. And this is just the moment where he's like, you know what? I'm done with this. This is not, that's not cool. And I'm, the, the tears aren't going to do it. The whole thing. Then there's the deliberation and game side of things at the house. And look at first glance, first blush, I'm with Tony. He's got no real allies in the game. And he's the bottom of the totem pole on his own team. And so the idea of him being like, I'll be the leader, the brokerer of the Eras 3 and 4 deal, and just the general high-level idea of Era 3 and 4 working together is solid. Basically, though, I realized that it was mostly just Casey convincing me of that, that it made sense for her, and it made sense for her team. And it kind of made sense for Air 3 team. And so just at that high level, I was like, yeah, Air 3 and 4 working together. They probably, I, I do agree, they might win the most all the dailies here. And like, you could just out with the old, keep the new, all kumbaya, great. There's some strong ties on different people on your teams. The whole thing made sense when Casey was saying it. And when we were just talking Era 3 and 4 holistically, Tony though, as the messenger of that, and as the one that's like the biggest believer in it, didn't make a whole lot of sense. And I just, yeah, I, I just never, I never got it at any point from him. He could, you know, if he went the other way, 
there's a lot more benefit, it feels like, to him. Because even if he goes with Air Four and makes the deal and gets his whole team on board, he's still the bottom guy on his team if they've got a pick, and the other team would know that and would also be picking. And so it doesn't really actually advance him a whole heck of a lot. But if he goes the other way, he could be fully ingratiated with Era 2. He would have Avery be down with him on his team. He now would have an ally on his team. And I think Naya would be right there with Avery. And they would have a little bit of cohesion on their portion of the team. And overall, he would just look like a team player. So way more benefit on the other side. No gain really at all on the uh, on the side he was playing, at least not for him. Honestly, there was kind of weirdly some gain for his team, but just not really as much for him. And Avery has the winning hand the whole time anyways. She's the one who's like, hey, if you don't know or don't care about any of the four people directly impacted, I do. I have an actual, I have one of the only people I actually know in this house is actually a good friend and he's up and I would like to save him. And also for our team, Yes, I get the like, maybe we align with them or we take out the stronger team, which we think is Era 4, which we think is Kylan and Casey going against Jody and Darrell, two of the better players on Era 1. Why not take out a big, like she has the winning hand all the way through. Now, over the course of this being debated and discussed amongst all the groups, it gets made out a lot of male versus female discussion um, and the the man trying to quiet the female's voice and all of that. And I totally get that the last example that we literally get shown here is Zach and Amanda, where Tony benefited from that uh, happening uh, by being saved in that moment. And in that moment, gender dynamics certainly needed to be discussed given Zach and Amanda's history and the history of Zach and female partners or teammates and being stubborn about who gets to have the say and everything like that. So in that situation, and I get that we then see that situation here and Tony is kind of linked to it. Why then that the gender dynamics really needed to be hit home hard in this episode. I didn't, I didn't fully feel like they needed to get hit home as hard as they did. So be it. Um, but I really think this was much more just the like not Tony is a stupid guy that thinks women don't have a voice and more you all keep saying Tony doesn't seem to want to be here and he's doing zero things to make me think otherwise. He's only corroborating this thing you keep saying in confessional Tony doesn't want to be here. And at first I'm like, well, you can't just say that. But then every action that he takes, I'm kind of like, oh, I think you're right. I think I think you're right. And he doesn't even want to say one single time at any point when they say in front of all the groups, you don't want to be here. And he never denies it. I think that's what needed to be hammered home even more than the other part. But either way, Avery has the winning hand the whole time. Tony has no, I don't know what he's doing here. And it uh, it just seems to be nothing. But maybe he did, in fact, want to go home. A couple other quick notes and questions, though. We haven't actually, I don't think, tell me if I'm wrong, comment below if you're watching on YouTube, DM me if you're just listening on audio. Did we get an answer to, Does do you have to pick one duo or the other? Do you have to pick, because they've made it seem like you either have to pick Derek and Aviv or you have to pick Kylan and Casey. You can't pick like Kylan and Aviv or Casey and Derek. And so I think that's that's what's up because if it could have been split, then Darrell saying Aviv is way worse, way worse. If it was like you have to pick one or the other, then Darrell, while he doesn't say it in that moment, maybe he didn't, we just didn't see it. If he would have just been like, I'd rather go against Derek than Kylan, so I'd rather go against Era 2. Then it's not, it still stings if you're Aviv, but it's not like as bad. But if it's, you can split it up, then why would Darrell not be like, I would like to go against Derek? And Jody could be like, I would like to go against this person and leave it at that. So that makes me think you have to pick which era is going in and we can't split things up. Also, I knew Kylan was never going in and therefore era four was never going in because they don't even mention that Kylan beat Darrell on an elimination on season 39 when Darrell was there as a mercenary. And so without even referencing at any point during this deliberation process or leading up to the arena that like, Hey, if they just put in who Avery wants and who they should put in era four, then we're getting a rematch of these two, even though one of them is from era one because of the way 39 was formatted. So I knew the whole time that wasn't happening at the arena. We get a pretty great game. I like this elimination a lot. And 
I know the men might still be going if the stage couldn't help. Okay. I understand Tony and Doral. Doral would have eventually figured it out. Tony would still be maybe attempting to figure out what he had to do here. If they didn't get help from the stage, I'm typically anti-stage help when it's this complicated. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it, but I do got to ask, how hard is it to turn the board around? Why, why does the board have to be facing the stage? Why can't the board be facing the other way where, yes, if they want to read it out loud and try to relay the message and make it a little harder to get that help, so be it. But why can't the, the board just be turned the other way? Anyways, I digress. TJ, definitely when explaining the rules, because I do try to re- type out furiously what TJ says uh, into my notes document. And he definitely says two tiles to a frame. And so then I was confused at the beginning of like, what's going on here. So either I misheard that or they just, what he meant to say or what meant to be passed along was that you have to do two in a row of every color. Cause the code for both the men and the women ends up being two in a row. Every time it was always like two yellows, two reds, two greens, et cetera, et cetera. And so that was the two tiles thing. But I thought he said two tiles to a frame. I thought they had to carry double the amount of tiles out there. I thought it was way more complicated even than it was, which already was a decent little, you know, puzzle to figure out in the first place. Needless to say, while doing it, you know, dead tired from carrying those heavy things around. Men's side. It seems like Devin and Jordan were willing to help Tony. Now, maybe that was just a little quick quick clip of them actually helping Avery. I don't know. Maybe they like offered it a little. And then when Tony was kind of just half-assing it around and acting all confused, they stopped. I don't know. But if they were willing to help, Tony could move those things faster than Darrell. Just I'm just saying. Tony is in really, really good shape now. And uh, and I think if his heart was in it and his team didn't hate him for how he ended up down there, I think he can win this no problem because Devin and Jordan seem to figure out what they need to do. Now, maybe they just had more time and their whole team and Avery and the, and everyone had more time to figure out the pattern by the time the women went. I don't know, but it, it seems like Devin and Jordan were willing to help uh, a little bit. And maybe Tony was just like, you know, nah, I'm good. And it didn't seem like he cared. It seemed like he did actually want to go home. And again, when everyone else says like, he doesn't want to be here, he doesn't even deny it, which really pisses me off one because Tony is fantastic. And even in this episode, he was quite entertaining. He'll come up in the moments of the episode a couple of times here. There was some things I just got chuckles out of was entertained by, even if he was doing all the wrong things at all the wrong times. And secondly, more importantly, it's a huge bummer because I think Leroy did really want to be there and made a huge sacrifice. And Cam made a huge sacrifice to say two weeks after we've given birth, you should go do this show. And, you know, if you're if you're willing to lose an elimination and go home, then let Leroy beat you in balls in like whatever. Just let Leroy win. No shame there. Losing there. Make it's easy to make it look like it wasn't that bad. Just go home then and let Leroy be there. That would have been a lot better. Also, what would be a lot better is if Darrell's back is fine. And if that was just a fun thing to say in confessional, to get the old man confessional from him and CT, and if he was actually, in fact, totally okay and not going to be something that two episodes from now they're referencing. Remember when he thought he, you know, tweaked something in his back? Now he's out of here. Now he's headed home. Please don't let that be the case. On the women's side, incredible work by Avery. She beats Jody who is still very fit, trains for these, and in her day was one of the better athletes we've had that maybe doesn't get full credit for being such. She beat Jody at an, an endurance elimination, a strength endurance elimination, which, you know, because it seemed like basically both between them having figured it out themselves and their teammates and crowd helping them and having figured it out and kind of at the same time, realizing they both had made a similar mistake and would have to go back and redo it, which was the real tricky part of this. It wasn't just the pattern and we it didn't come up on the men's side, but then on the women's side, it comes up like it's the pattern, but it's a very specific one because you only have four yellows. So you can't start with it. And that's confusing and was made and put in there so that what would happen here would happen, that they would both have to start over, even if they got the combo right from the beginning Very diabolical stuff from the production team, but it's an endurance challenge. Once they both know what to do, they're both having it yelled out by their teammates who are over there making sure everything they yell is correct and really thinking through it while the women are working. So it's an endurance challenge, and Avery beats her in not by a ton, but convincingly. It wasn't like neck and neck even. like She was a couple ahead of her. 
And that's super impressive and absolutely hats off to Avery. I love Jody a ton. Always was a Jody fan, but I am glad Avery not only got this win and in this fashion and got this validation, but I am glad Avery is staying overall. I think she's going to be a better character for this season's entertainment and intrigue amongst the cast and the dynamics of her on her team and everything else. So I, I hate losing Jody. We'll basically say that about every person we lose all season long because this is a fantastic cast across the board, but I'm very glad Avery stayed and she absolutely showed out. To the awards we go. Best quote. I did a little better job of taking notes in my regular routine here, but I still missed a few of them. So I know I know there's a bunch. Comment below anything that I missed. But the ones I do want to highlight, Naya quote, I am absolutely going to make one or both of these men fall in love with me because that strategy, and if it keeps me safe in the game, then why not? End quote. Just, you know, all time unbelievable so far a plus politicking going down by naya here i applaud it tj saying don't fuck with me all right let's go it's you as how he brings tony and avery down into the sand very very great stuff nehemiah is quick i caught it beat his ass Darrell was fantastic and then there was a great tina confessional uh at the very very end about Darrell making the decisions and the stammering and like what's going on in his head love 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 that didn't write down exactly what she said uh in that because i was so engrossed and oh my god these decisions are amazing and so yeah of those four we give it to naya she gets the best quote of the episode best moment Emily and Brad get a nomination for sure. Um, era four side swiping era two in the boat, just clipping their back and then turning them all the way around while they get to keep going forward was a really expert maneuver there. The toga party, the fun part of the toga party, the getting ready, all the outfits, the glamour, the main, I think it was more like 90 seconds. I think I was, you know, not being fair early. It was at least 90 seconds that we got of that fantastic, fantastic stuff. Naya and Kylan and Josh. Fantastic. Uh, one moment that I didn't even catch in the episode, but was on my quick check-in with the social media before recording. I did see this again. Shout out to Naya. Unfortunately, I can't shout out the person she was quote tweeting, but she had quote tweeted quote, quote tweeted someone who had had a screenshot of Michelle eating some noodles, just looking like the most like like kind of dead inside a little bit but just like someone who as naya says in her in the quote tweet of it of look this woman had had some drinks it was a long ass day she was tired ready to go to bed just trying to enjoy a little a little scrumptious noodle before laying down and then suddenly chaos and all this stuff started happening right immediately in front of her like literally in the room right immediately in front of her and she was just trying to process and take it in and enjoy your noodles. It was a fantastic screenshot. And so that gets thrown in to the moments. And then Tony and Derek, I didn't touch on this earlier, but of the many moments that Tony did entertain me in all of his stupidity about what he was going to do here, when him and Derek have the little conversation, Derek's like, what are you going to do? Tony's like, I'm sticking to my guns. And Derek is just like his only response nice and then flips his glasses down i just love those two talking strategy Derek semi gas and tony up semi in his own head like is this a good move is this a horrible move i don't know what it just let tony be tony all of that was fantastic avery winning the elimination and getting to stand firm on her again winning hand that she should have had in that deliberation and argument and then the picking of the targets at the end was pretty fun and riveting having them do it right there that first time as the big surprise really really great i'm giving the award to the toga party though the picking of the targets is a strong second place finish and as for mvp tony Gets on the ballot. Darrell's on the ballot. Nia third. Devin second. Loved everything he was doing this episode. Avery's got to be first, though. Bring the entertainment and obviously the big win at the end. Now for predictions, which so far, so good. We're really, we're really doing good. We we hit six out of eight of the elimination predictions. Um, and then we said that the next episode would be a regular team daily and that the two winners would get to pick the targets. Nailed that. 
we a little bit of the in-between, but whatever. And then I also said I thought Air 3 would win behind Jordan, Tori, and Devin's leadership, which kaboom, nailed that. So we're really we're really doing, doing some good things right now. And so far, my winner's picks are floating, you know, feeling good. Jordan and Jenny, although now they are both targets, so we shall see. So, so far, so good. Let's talk about this format real quick, though, and the target aspect. Uh, I love it. Love, love, love it. It is so good. Um, I thought this would be the case, and so I was ready to love it in advance. I wasn't, though, fully expecting or thinking through that the middle two teams captains would be the only choices in my head. I guess I had thought that the target thing would be like, yes, the winner winning captains. I'm going to call them captains as much as I call them targets. Cause that's, that's what they are. I know they're targets cause they're picked by other people, but you know, they mean the same thing, whichever one I say that the captains of the winning team would be like the power brokers and that the losing captains would go into elimination. But I guess in my head, I had that it would be more than the captains on the two middle teams that you'd get to pick from everyone. And so that it's straight up just, those are the eight people. Four of them are going into elimination is unbelievable. It's fantastic. It's diabolical. And if they just stick to it, if they just stick to what they've laid out right now, you're in teams Elimination winners put targets. Targets are the ones up for power or elimination. Ugh. If they could just do that for like five, six, seven rounds, five, six, seven episodes, the whole season would be amazing, but I'm not even asking for that. Just for a while. Don't change this up three episodes from now, two episodes from now. Please, please, please. I'm begging you. It's just really, really great. It's going to be a total mess strategically in the house. There is no perfect way to do this. But so much thought and strategy is going to have to go into it. It's going to just wreck social dynamics in the house, which should be great. Yes, it does allow for like you could still gang up on one person in theory, but not if they actually end up in an elimination. You know, you could if someone keeps not and, you know, if someone keeps their team doesn't win and they're they're the one that doesn't get put into elimination, you could put the same person, the target over and over and over. But like. If you make them the target and they end up in elimination, they either go home or they are the one picking the targets for the next one. So you can't really totally gang up on anyone too, too much, like a little bit, which is always going to be there. So yeah, love everything about it. Do have the question though, is everyone doing the karma points or is that just going to be not mentioned again until the end? And it was only the eight people. What's going on with those? I would love if we could just always be attuned to what is going on all across the format of the game. But, you know, that's asking way too much. Predictions. Men's side. We have, let's see here. We have, oh my gosh. The the eliminations next week are going to be amazing. One way or the other. Derek, Bananas, Jordan, and Horacio are the four men up for elimination. Anissa, Laurel, Naya, and Jenny are up on the women's side. Please give us a physical elimination because holy shit, whatever the matchups are, they're impeccable. They're fantastic. Predictions are going to be era three wins again. Era one loses again. I think they double up on the wins and losses here. I think era three, like I said before, Devin, Jordan, Tory leading the team and everyone falling in line with that. And especially Jordan being like, if we have to think about something, Devin's do it. If we have to do something physical, I'll do it. Maybe I'll take the lead, but like Devin's the mouthpiece and occasionally Tory is, and everyone falls in line, and they've got a great, strong team around them. That team's going to win a hell of a lot of dailies the long, as long as they get to stay in the team. And I think Era 1, we know from the next week on, it's trivia, which, you know, they have as much experience as anyone, but we also know it's the one CT ends up in the ambulance. Maybe, you know, that's one person out. Who knows? Maybe that rattles the team. Who knows? I think Era 1 loses again. And I think Jordan and Naya pick Laurel and Bananas to go in over picking era four and officially make that deal with era four, which I think would be a hilarious to do after the fact now. And I think just mostly if those two are the ones in power, Jordan and Naya, then I think they're team Kara and they're going to be on the Laurel and bananas. Like, let's see if we can get you out of here. Anissa and Derek can definitely beat you pending what it is. And so, yeah, I think those are, uh, that's what's going to happen one way or the other. This episode was fantastic. You know, the the first two episodes were good. I shared my the things I didn't love about them last week. But I think next week's episode is set up to be absolutely amazing. And I just think this season so far right now is starting to round into 
round into the view that I can see a true all-timer amazing season being delivered to us. So let's hope, fingers crossed, we continue on that trajectory. Thank you so much for being here. Again, if you're headed to randomly headed to Challenge Mania Chicago this weekend, let me know. Say what's up. Otherwise, I will talk to all of you again next Wednesday night for Episode 4's recap. Until then, peace. Peace.